first ever EMS Hot Minute of the Day. Today's subject is going to be on spinal motion restrictions. I have some topics that I want to go ahead and talk about today, and uh, that way we have a better understanding of when is the appropriate time to use it and when's not such a great time to use it. So let's get started. Give me a call, man. The collar that the St. Lucie County Fire District uses. This collar right here has an adjustable format. We're able to use it from a no neck patient all the way up to a tall patient. Simply pull on the tabs, you'll be able to adjust it. Make sure you flip the chin rest so that the chin rests on the patient itself. Here's your typical collar that we use. One of the indications that you would use a collar would be for an acutely altered uh, patient with a GCS less than 15 who was involved in a traumatic event. Number two, any midline or back deformation or uh, injury that occurred because of a traumatic event would definitely be another indication of, a, uh, of an injured spine. Number three, focal neurologic signs or symptoms which include things like motor weaknesses or uh, neurological deficits from a traumatic event. Anatomic deformity of the spine is another indication in which you wouldn't you which you would use a C collar. Any complaint or injury as a result of a traumatic event, i.e., NBCs, fall, or battery, something happens to the patient and they fall off a of bed, definitely would be a good indicator to use a C collar. Language barrier. If you have no idea what the patient is saying, whatever language that they're speaking, you definitely want to go ahead and use a C collar if a traumatic event occurred. Ooh, no, no, not that one, not that one. And last but not least, when in doubt, use a collar. And that's your hot minute of the day. Thank you very much. If you guys have any questions, please refer to your FTO, FTC, but you can also call the training division. Thank you guys very much.